on an all-new Dr. Phil. Right face, you whale. She knew. She claims her mom stole her children. I want her to give me my kids. It's not up to her. If you don't show up for court, if you fail drug tests. She can't function in the real world. You're the one solution. Oh, my God, you're so not listening. I'm listening. Quit being a know-it-all and hear what I'm telling you. I'm trying, but it's hard to deal with her. It's hard to deal with you. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. don't always get along. But Lisa and Amanda take it to a whole new level. Amanda has threatened to bash her mother's face in and burn down the house with her in it. Now, Lisa admits it is a total war and she's ready to get a restraining order against her daughter. Take a look. I despise my mother. I don't want anything to do with her. Don't call me any more names. My face, you whale. She a new. Oh, you're ugly. Amanda's always told me that she hopes my plane crashes. And the happiest day of her life will be when I die. What is wrong with you? Call me a prostitute, lying on me to get my baby taken away. My mom is crazy, controlling, and evil. My mom has tried sabotaging my jobs, got me kicked off of our properties. She has ruined my relationship with every man I have been with. And my mom's called the cops on me at least 10 times. Amanda tells us that she is no longer taking prescription pills, but when she comes to our house, she's either manic or she acts insane. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? If Amanda doesn't change, we are going to file a restraining order against her to keep her out of our lives completely. For the past two years, Amanda's parents have had custody of Amanda's four-year-old son and 13-year-old daughter because they say Amanda is just unfit. But Amanda claims her mom stole her children away from her. My mom's just jealous of me because I am a good mother. I am everything she's not. And that kills her. Right now. What's mommy? No, he knows you're leaving. Get Let I have a 13-year-old daughter and a 4-year-old son. My mom had CPS maliciously take my kids away from me by telling them I was selling drugs, beating my child, selling myself. Oh, Amanda is homeless, jobless, and I just don't feel that she's fit to be a parent. And then we'll call CPS today. My mom makes it appear that I'm crazy and I'm on hardcore drugs that are making me delusional or paranoid. No, it's not that. I'm seeing all this stuff go on and I get so upset about it. I can't control myself. Drop kick you right in your face for calling me a prostitute. Don't you ever lie. You're a prostitute. Your mother maybe was. Amanda comes to our house sometimes 11 o'clock at night, throwing rocks at her daughter's window so that she will let her in. Once she's there, she'll ask to borrow the car. She'll ask for money. It just turns into an absolute war. Why my so bad? You can't see. Man, you need to get out of my house. Get out of my house in front of this child. My mom has kicked me, smacked me, spit on me, all in front of my children. Just this past Labor Day, I had to call the police on Amanda again. She wouldn't leave and it just got nasty. And the police found pills in her purse, a cutoff straw, and cellophane. My mom has brainwashed my kids to the point where my four-year-old swears at me. My 13-year-old tells me to shut up. Bitch, you just spit in my eye. Come on, you're a bitch, baby. My mom tries to make it look like she's good and she's doing all this and everybody's like, oh my God, Amanda's horrible. The truth is my mom's just pure evil. Okay, so she's pure evil. Yes. Okay, she stole your children? Well, she manipulated the system, yeah. Well, she stole them by manipulating the system. Yes, she's What's her motive in doing that? I don't know. She's been trying since my daughter was two. So you're a fit mother? Yes. And how do you define fit? I'm active with my kids. I teach them things. She's made it so bad now that my daughter and I don't even have a relationship. One of the things I've actually done over the years is determine fitness of a parent. 
And some of that's subjective, but some of it is you've got like a checklist. Right. And you go down to determine if someone is fit to be shepherding a child through this life. And there are some things you check off, like do they have a stable home? Do they have financial stability where they can provide for the child? Are they emotionally stable? Do they have the ability to nurture the child and make sure they get medical care and dental care and get to school on time and all of that sort of thing? Do you have a home? Not my own home, but I have a home that I stay at, yes. Well, you don't have a home. Do you have a job? Yes. Okay, is it, a, is it a job that is enough and stable enough to sustain a family, to raise your children? Because being a single mom's tough, I mean. Right, right. Under the best of circumstances. Right, and if she didn't keep sending my boss, like, videos of two years ago and constantly harassing me at every job I get, it would be fine, but she kind of has a tendency yeah. to do that. Well, we have a recent video. Uh, let's take a look at this. Get your camera out of my face because you done. You're you're done with your slander. You gotta go. You're done. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? I don't have your phone. I need my phone. You just accused me of having my god. And I told in your Where's my phone? This phone, it's Wi Fi. Where's my phone? You gotta go. Don't call me anymore. You gotta go. Don't call me anymore. Name. My face, you whale shamu. God, you're ugly. What is wrong with you? Call me a prostitute. Lying on me to get my baby taken away. I lied. I'll kick you right in your face for calling me a prostitute. Don't you ever lie. You're a prostitute. Your mother maybe was. Or maybe your dad was because he didn't like your mother. Don't you ever call me a prostitute. Amanda, you, you don't have a job a and you have money. If I was a prostitute, I wouldn't work. be broke. You don't work. Wouldn't be broke homeless, would I? I don't think so. You're stupid and you're sick. Did and you, you're what'd you call me today? You're dying. What? Two years ago. Okay. When this all so first happened. When was that video taken? Um, just a few months after she lost her children. Child Protective Services got involved. How'd they get involved? Um, she my called. My husband made the initial call. They asked her if she would be willing to take drug tests, and she failed okay. the first one. Well, you say you've been clean for five years, though, right? I have been clean. Yeah, I've been clean from taking. I used to take pain pills. Yeah. I would take like four a day. Well, you said you've been clean for five years. Yeah, that's okay. correct. But did you just fail a drug test? No, I haven't failed any drug test since. Uh -huh. um, in May of 14, the children were removed from your home after you failed three consecutive drug tests. I had an that Adderall. That was in 14. Was this in... is 16. That's two years, not five. I did have the Adderall in my system, and that wasn't prescribed at the time, but I was diagnosed with it a year prior, and I took it on Saturday when I went to work, and then I took it on another Saturday when I went to work. But the benzos, they started prescribing after CPS told me I had to see a therapist on a mm -hmm. monthly basis. I'm not trying to build a case against you. I'm just right. saying you said you were clean for five years, and I see here you failed three consecutive drug tests in May of 2014. So it wasn't like just one time you took some before you went to work. There were one, two, three consecutive drug tests, and you failed three in a row. That was in 14. That's two years, not five years. Well, if you're talking about the pain pills, like I didn't, that was what I was addicted to. I had a pain pill addiction. And then in 2015, you stopped taking the drug tests. Because I was told by, I did the six-week parenting class. I did every, like, plan that they wrote out for the next year and a half. Well, why did you stop taking the, the drug tests that they said you needed to take? <clears throat> well, because that was, I fought for a year and a half at that point. And I was testing every week. I would have to drive down there. But then my car, it stopped working. So I didn't have a ride down there. And after, at that point, it was like, well, I guess I'm not getting my kids back. What is the point of me going and doing all this for them when... They tell me I'm getting them, and that was the goal. That's why I did all this stuff, and then I didn't get them. Did the you end. miss your last court appearance? I did, on accident. If I was on your case, and I would say, are you, are you, you failed three drug tests in a row, then you quit taking drug tests, and then you don't show up for your court hearing, I'm like, okay. We've been going through this for the last... You're telling me you're ready for your kids back, and you don't even show up for your court hearing. That, would that was not for child good. support. That it doesn't matter what it's for. You don't show up. 
It wasn't that I didn't just not show up. We've been going to court. Well, actually, so it is because they they issued a bench warrant. Well, they did. Well, when we come back, Amanda says she has a prescription for the medication she takes. We're going to look at what she's been prescribed next. We'll be right back. I don't think you're my real mom. Do you say that sarcastically no, I or do you that, really think honestly, she's not your mother? I say that 100%. You have not liked me since I was a child. And later, you stop taking drug tests. You don't show before. up for court. You fail drug tests. Are, are you drug free? Yes. Can I you am. pass a drug test right now? Yes. Will you take one at the break? Yes. We'll be right back. I don't think I'm my mom's biological daughter. There is no photos to prove that she was ever pregnant with me. My mom has told me, no, I'm not your mom. Your mom's a crackhead just like you. And she didn't even want you. I honestly hope that that's not my mom because I don't see how anybody can do that to their dog. She says you're just pure evil. You've stolen these children. You've manipulated the system. She says you sabotage her jobs. You sabotage her housing. You do everything you can to make her look as bad as you possibly can. You call the cops on her at the drop of a hat. You call them to get her out of your house. You do everything you can to make her look as bad as you possibly can. And she absolutely hates you and would burn the house down with you in it if she could. Right. So what is it that it is, why are you two in this kind of a, of, of a war, of a battle? Are, are you telling me you're misreading her this bad? Because she's saying, I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not on drugs. I'm capable. Of, I've got a job. I have a place to live. I'm not on drugs. I can take care of these kids. Dr. Phil, she, uh, as you saw in the video, she... That was two years ago. Well, no, we have, we have more recent. I know. Uh, but she's, she, she can't. She can't function in the real world. She hallucinates, makes things up. She comes to my house and to see her son. And she will come in and immediately, can I use the car? Uh, you're not my mom. You're not my mom. You're not, no. You're, you're not crazy. Mom. You're it not is not dad. immediately. You're crazy. You're delusional. You are. You're the one that's delusional. Dad will say, uh, you want to take my car? Your car's too hot. You don't have air. Why would I want to sit here, there and argue with you in front of my four-year-old when you're going to say, oh, bitch, shut your mouth. And he's going to repeat it. Mm. That's exactly what you said last week. Right. After, after I got out of jail. Well, right. Have they, yeah. Have they bought, have they purchased you eight cars? Um, since I was 16, she did. My dad. A Chevy, a Pontiac, a Honda, a... A Scion. A, I actually Scion. paid okay. on that. A Dodge, an Oldsmobile, a Toyota, a, 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 a Suzu. Um, there's a... I've got a list of eight cars here that... But that's her thing. You come back home, we'll buy you a new car. I'm not coming back home. <laughs> She's, they always try to control me with cars and vehicles and... They bought you furniture and... No. What did, you, what did you buy me? You what? threw my couch away that was in your garage after you told me to move all my stuff there. After you got me evicted. Did you just request that she buy you a new house and another new car? No. I told her that she needs to make up for the furniture, the couch that she threw away that she promised she would. Did she ask you to buy her a new house and a new car? When? She does all the time. She says, if you were my dad, you would buy me a new car. You would help me get a house. Yes, she does. I don't say real dad. I don't think you're my real mom. Like, uh, you don't have one picture pregnant. You have been, you have not liked me since I was a child. So you don't think she's your actual mother? Something. I mean, you, I don't understand how you treat blood like that. I can never treat my kids the way she does me. Never. I mean, is, are you, do you say that sarcastically? No, I or say you that really think honestly, she's not your mother? I say that 100%. I mean, this week, but next week. No, so. I've been saying that all the time. I say it all the time. Well, here, we've got the birth certificate. Well, this, can't this be? This is your birth certificate. It says parents, uh, Lisa and Dennis, the same last name. We blocked right, it but out so here. did my son. Same birth date uh, as, as yours. I mean, this appears to be your birth certificate. Right. My son says the same thing, but his dad, his biological dad, isn't on the birth certificate. I mean, so. Well, you know, dads can be questionable, but usually mothers. Well, uh, yeah, but okay. Okay, I guess you're right there. But I don't know. I just, she's evil. I don't trust it. I don't understand why she goes at me all the time. She, as you can, as you notice, you have the film from her filming me. I don't walk around filming her. 
she would stand at the foot of my bed and say, come on, whore, get up. And <gasps> the, yeah, you would. Oh yeah, she would. And then you'll hit the record button. Yeah. That so was one she'll of those say, days. "Come on, whore, get up," and then start the tape. Yes, yes, yes. I am not like, kidding. Poke I kid you. Start the tape. She used to, and, I, and after a while, I just kind of got used to it. I don't go as crazy when she films me now, but it's kind of annoying. Well, you I, get you get pretty annoyed. With her, yeah. Um, so, but I'm I'm trying to figure out where your thinking is. That's why I said you you really think. Something's wrong. You got mixed up at the hospital or something? It's the wrong mother? I would like to think that because I just don't understand how somebody could go and do all they've done to their daughter to keep hurting them. Well, Amanda's sister, Chelsea, says Amanda is a narcissist and a horrible mother. Well, let's meet her next. Maybe she's not her sister. <laughs> I, I, Often Amanda will go out all night and sleep all day and can't take care of her children. Amanda's son couldn't even talk until my mother took custody when he was two and a half. I've never met anyone as selfish as Amanda. And later, that needs to end today. I'm a mandated reporter. That either stops today or I'm reporting. Well, Amanda's younger sister, Chelsea, describes her sister as delusional Selfish, hateful, deceitful, and despicable. She says they've never been close, but these past five years have really torn them apart. Take a look. I've never met anyone as selfish as Amanda. If you don't do what Amanda wants, she will yell, scream, and berate you until she gets what she wants. Don't call me any more names. My face, you bail. She a meal. I your ugly. She does not help my parents, and she doesn't feel guilty for the burden she's put on my parents. Amanda, let's go. You need to get out of my house. He's late for school. Yeah, he's late for school. Often Amanda will go out all night and sleep all day and can't take care of her children. I honestly couldn't sleep at night if that was me, knowing that my child doesn't know where I am and doesn't know if I'm coming back. I just can't even imagine doing that as a mother. Amanda's four-year-old son is developmentally delayed, and she admitted to taking painkillers while she was pregnant. Come on, you're a bitch, baby. Amanda's son couldn't even talk until my mother took custody when he was two and a half. Before that, he only grunted and he couldn't string words together. Amanda thinks my mom has brainwashed me against her, but that isn't true. Amanda only has herself to blame. Okay, you've been listening to everything so far, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. Uh, what, what do you have to add, clarify, straighten out? First off, I don't think Amanda is a horrible mother all the time at certain times. And I think Amanda could definitely be a great mother if she had the right tools. I don't want any children in the middle of these spats. That yeah. is, that's pretty much why I'm here. I'm here for the children, Dr. Phil. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you about, I mean, let's take a look at what's happening in front of the children. Take a look. This is the last straw. Oh, Brenda will call CPS straw. today. Oh, and I won't be calling. You're, you're such a, a You're a You really are a I'm sorry. She, you're, you're not going to have a wrist of hand. Amanda, hand. let's go. You need to get out of my house. He's here. late for school. Yeah, he's, he's late, late for school. Leave. Leave. Get out of my you house. You my son so bad you can't see. Man, you need to get out of my house. I don't want to work. And guess what? You see physicians is going to be in the Get out of my house in front of this child. You're gonna, he's scared. Right now, he wants his mommy. No, he's he proven. knows you're leaving. Get the f out. Oh my God, you are in so much oh trouble. Oh my God, and you are in so much trouble. Let's go. Will you please shut your face? That's not okay. It happens every time she comes in my house. That was two and years ago. And that's why we call the police. She's mm -hmm. the one that bullies, not me. Okay, well, let me ask you something. If... Right now, uh, your mother just said, fine, here you go. Here's your daughter, here's your son, lose our phone number, don't ever come to our house again, we won't ever come to your house again, you are good to go, on your own, we're out of here, you, you and your children would live where? I would live at my friend's house who, their house is paid off and I've been staying there the last two years. 
you're not their responsibility. Right, right, I know that. Wh why but should they Why should they be taking care of you and your two children? Well, Dr. Phil, I did get my own condo. I got my own place. They said that was the only thing holding me back from obtaining my custody. Then a week after me obtaining this condo, she files for permanent custody. Oh, my goodness. It's true. You, you even uh, said... What do you, you, what do you mean, say? Dr. Phil, we have been in and out of court for custody for almost a year and a half. And she was not doing what was required for her to get the children back. And they said, that's it. You know, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You stopped drug screening, you know, several, like eight months ago. It's time to move forward with permanent custody. Look, you can solve a lot of this if you just, if you just say, okay, look, fine, we will withdraw from this and we will just put the kids back in in your custody, will CPS allow that? No. So, I mean, I don't, I, I work in the system. This is not her call. If, if these children, if she surrenders these children, do you think they will go back to you? I think, so. well, she keeps saying, the way, what you keep saying, I got them taken away, I can get them back. Why do you always say that? <clears throat> so you keep lying to me, basically, then. You're lying. All you've done is lie. No, if you, you do can this, get, them, get them back. back. If you do this, she says, if no, you go to the hospital, you can get I did them back. everything. You can get them back. The whole point of Child Protective Services, the whole point of that system is reunification of family. So she's right, you can get it back, but you have to do certain things to do that. Right, and I did all that within the first year, and it, like I said. No, I you stop taking drug tests. You don't show before. up for court. You fail drug tests. Are, are you drug free? Yes. Can I you am. pass a drug test right now? Yes. Will you take one at the break? Yes. We'll be right back. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by I was abusing pain pills in the past, so I could numb myself against my mom's craziness. I stopped taking the pain pills completely six years ago. The only pills I take now are my prescriptions, methadone, Adderall, and my benzos. If I took a drug test today, I would pass no problem. Before the break, I asked Amanda to go and take a drug test. So she's headed backstage right now. We're gonna get that answer. We're gonna find out what chemicals are in her system and what she has a prescription for and what she doesn't. We're gonna pin that down, because I'm wanting to start dealing with facts. And the fact that you know what happens when she comes over, you know it melts down, correct? Correct. Okay, so my question is, why do you continue to do that? Because you know what's gonna happen? You're going to lose those children. Well. <laughs> that's why I'm here. I'm a mandated reporter. That either stops today or I'm reporting it. Okay? So that means you either stop that today, and if it requires getting a restraining order, then get a restraining order. And will a piece of paper keep somebody out of the door? No, but it's one step in the process. So when you do call the police, you can hand them the restraining order, and then there's no debate about he said, she said, who called who, whatever name, blah, 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 blah. Because then you have a document from the court that says she is not to be within 500 feet of this house or me, and she is, bang, she's out. You just don't reward bad behavior, and you're rewarding bad behavior. Mm -hmm. She's coming over, and you are buying in and arguing with her. You see it, right? I do, and it's hard because I get where she's coming from. She doesn't get a break, mm -hmm. and it's a lot on her. And, and God bless you for doing it, you evil bitch. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, it, 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 no good deed goes unpunished, right? I mean, uh, and, and if you can't do it, then you can't do it. You, you have to, you know, they have to go into the system. If you can't do it, they have to go into the system. But if you can, at least do it without the drama. Wouldn't it be so much easier mm -hmm. without all the drama? Absolutely. And don't you deserve to do it without the right. drama? If you're going to have to do it, and when I say have to do it, I know it's a chore. I know that doesn't mean that you don't love them and you're not so happy to be able to wrap your arms around them, but it's still taxing, isn't it? 
It's killing. I mean, it's, I've got grandchildren, cool. and I, we had them over this weekend, and I just so love having them over, and I so love to see them pull mm -hmm. out of the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Because uh, I just don't have the energy I used to, you know? We're, you know, we're, not, we're a little longer in the tooth than we used to be, right? Yes. Uh, if you've got somebody that's coming in your house, and they open the door and start telling you how worthless and evil you are, don't answer the door. <laughs> you know, you, you need to stop. You need to stop doing this. You just need to you need, give her the Heisman, you know? Just, you, don't, you don't get to come in here. And I'm willing to get her whatever help she will accept uh, to, to help her get back to clear unobstructed view of life. I, I, I will help her do that. Um, I don't think she's a, I, I don't think she's a, I don't think she's an evil person, even though she was raised by an evil woman. I don't think she was any person. And, and I do think you're her mother. Um, but I think she needs to recognize that the things that she's doing are not getting her closer to what she says she wants. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, Amanda says she's not on drugs. I hope she's telling the truth about that. The drug test results when we get back. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by... Amanda says she's been working very hard to get her children back. She says she has a job and is off drugs. Now, at the break, I asked Amanda if she would take a drug screen, and she said yes, uh, she would. So we asked uh, Ellen Curtis, a registered nurse, to administer a drug test today. So, Ellen, you administered the test, correct? Yes, I did. And uh, tell us what the results were. Was she positive for uh, anything, and if so, what? Methadone. Uh-huh. Benzos, marijuana, and Adderall. The Adderall. three things I told you yeah. I would be. Uh-huh. Uh, so benzos, Adderall, methadone, three things and been on. Marijuana. marijuana. And do you, what do you have prescriptions for? I have prescriptions for all three. Uh-huh. And why did you not provide those to us? Well, it was last minute. I can call and get that. Well, no, it wasn't I mean, last minute. It was last minute. No, My it wasn't said, last minute. Um, it is when you don't have a car and you're trying to get everything done. And you're smoking dope. That's well, not my favorite. Well, I, I had told her about that. Oh, There is I, that. <laughs> yeah, there, there was that. But, I mean, I was honest. I gave you guys a test to prove I'm not doing anything. I told her. I yeah, told I, you right when I got out of jail that I smoked. <clears throat> I told you you were sitting right there. The thing that... I'm concerned about is you're, you're continuing to play the victim and say that all of your problems here are because of your mother. And I haven't heard you one time for one minute say that you are at all grateful that someone is housing, feeding, clothing, Supervising, nurturing, no, I've, I've and always loving said your that. children. I am grateful for that. Okay, so what do you want her to do? I want her to give me my kids and leave me alone. It's not up to her. No, but she needs to stop interfering. There are two children whose lives hang in the balance here. You've got a daughter who is alienated right now. Mm -hmm. She's alienated from you. That's a terrible thing that relationship needs to be healed. Right. You have a son that is beginning to model very aggressive, yeah. uh, out of control behavior, using language that um, is rage-based, uh, aggressive language at four. Right. And let me tell you, when people come to me with kids that are 15 and 16 that are knocking holes in the wall and storming out of the house and wrecking cars, and they say, he just, I don't know, just all of a sudden. No, that, those are the kids that were acting this way when they were four. Mm -hmm. Only difference 
when they're throwing a tantrum at 15 or 16 is they're bigger and stronger and they're able to come into conflict with outside authority instead of inside authority. If you want to be a responsible parent, you will put their interest ahead of your own, you will put their interest ahead of your own, and you too will figure out a way to reunify those children with you. You too will figure out a way to coexist and co-parent or stay to hell away from each other. Yes. And if you cannot, if you cannot come into her home and treat her with dignity and respect, then you need to stay out of that home. It's just that simple. And if, if you need to get a restraining order to enforce that, then you need to do that. Those children need to not hear another exchange the way they ha have been hearing so far. They should not see what they have been seeing. And if that continues, you're subject to losing those children as well. Coming up, my plan on how Amanda can get her children back and what needs to happen to implement what I just said. We'll be right back. That right there, insight, is the number one predictor of whether somebody is going to actually change and get better. You, you blame your mother for everything. I've, I've, I've read every word you've said. I've listened to you here. You, you said, I don't even know if she's my mother, but if she is, she's evil. I, I hope she's not, because she is your mother, and... If she's evil, that means you've got the genetic transmission. Now, that's why I want to keep my kids away from her. I want to parent them total opposite from oh how I was parenting. Oh, my God, you're so not listening. <laughs> I'm trying, but it's hard. It's just you, hard to deal with her. It's hard to deal with you. You need to understand, if you really want to reunify with your children, you need to find a way to get along with this woman. I'm a mandated reporter, and if I don't have confidence this is settled down... I'm going to report this, and they will take those children out of this home, and they will put them in foster care before dark today. Can I say something? It makes strange bedfellows, but you guys need to say, you know what? We need to quit beating each other up and put these children's interest in. They need to be with the their top. mom. I mean, they, they definitely they need to be with me. Absolutely. Well, you know what? You can continue to be a know-it-all hardhead, or you can listen to what I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell I'm you listening. how to get those children back. I'm listening. Then quit being a combative know-it-all hardhead and hear what I'm telling you. <laughs> you can get those children back, and you should. Amanda, they're your children. Mm -hmm. They need to be with their mother. Mm -hmm. I, know. I am going to get you professional help to facilitate and speed this along. Okay. Thank you. And I don't know, if, if you're white knuckling on drugs and you think you need to be in some kind of rehab, I will help you with that. If you need family counseling, I will help you with that. Uh, I brought T.J. Howard here today from, he's the Director of Operations and Origins Behavioral Healthcare. I, I brought him here. Because if, if, you, if you feel like you need rehab, I'm prepared to arrange that for you in a gender-specific dual diagnosis treatment program. If you need it, he is there to help you with that. But you two keep harping and sniping at each other. I will get involved. I have no choice. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by... Now, my next guest, Jennifer, hasn't seen her husband, Daniel, since his deployment to Iraq for the Army National Guard. Now, Jennifer says the stress of her husband being away and a new job have her looking older than when Daniel left just eight months ago. But Daniel is on a flight home right now. So we're going to help Jennifer look better than ever for their reunion that's going to be coming up very soon. Take a look. 
I am a military wife and I am so proud of it. I am a mother of three and both of my sons are active in the Army National Guard. It is very stressful to have my husband and two sons in the military. I feel like the stress may be causing me to age faster. When it comes to my looks, I need help. I was told a beauty expert is going to help me bring that youthful look back to my face. Hi. Hi. I'm Chilon. I'm here to zhuzh you up and answer this house call. You ready for this? I'm ready. So I hear you have some really big things happening in your life. It's my 24th wedding anniversary and my husband is coming home from Iraq after being gone for eight months. Well, what can I help you with today? I would like your help with all the stress in my life. I feel like I have aged tremendously. I have lines and wrinkles and I need to have that youthful glow back. I do have a secret weapon to help you combat that. Shall we give it a try? Let's go. This is the number seven Protect and Perfect Intense Advanced Serum. You're gonna use just a little bit of it. You know, apply it all over your face. It feels great. It's very light. I can't even tell I have it on. And you can get it at Target for less than $30. I can use this every day. So you ready for this makeover? I'm ready. It's going to be so fun. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. This is Jennifer. We just need a little trim here. Mm -hmm. And we really talked about framing the face with some extra color mm -hmm. with some beautiful highlights. All right, well joining me on behalf of number seven is dermatologist Dr. Tess Mauricio, and in the audience we have beauty expert Shilon Liu. You spent a whole day with Jennifer, how'd it go? I have to say, when we first started, Jennifer was so nervous about this reunion with her husband because it had been such a long time. We got her a new haircut, these flattering clothes, but the one thing that was really bothering her was how her skin looked. She felt as if the stress from her husband's deployment was really starting to show up on her skin. So, doctor, is it true that stress can affect your skin? Absolutely. Stress can definitely play an important role in the way your skin looks, especially if you're not sleeping or worrying. Well, I'm sure Jennifer worried every day with her husband in Iraq because, I mean, who knows what's going to happen there. Well, I think it's time to see Jennifer before she heads off to get reunited with her husband, Daniel. So, here's a look at Jennifer before her makeover. Jennifer, come on out and show us what your husband is gonna see when he gets back from Iraq. Come on out. So good to see you, so good to see you. Okay. So, just, uh, so uh, tell me, how do you feel? I feel amazing. I have a new haircut, new makeup, new clothes. I just hope he's going to recognize me when he sees me tonight. <laughs> yeah. I bet he remembers everything he needs yeah. to remember. It looks like Shilon really helped Jennifer because she, I mean, she just looks beautiful, right? She looks amazing. And I'm so glad that Shilon actually gave you some great advice on uh, how to take good care of your skin. And I love that she recommended a serum because it's an easy way to do something great for your skin. This one from number seven, Protect and Perfect mm -hmm. Intense Advanced Serum, contains really powerful ingredients that are good for the skin, such as advanced peptides and antioxidants. And Jennifer, I just wanna emphasize that if you stick with it, you will see results quickly. This has been clinically proven to reduce the appearance of wrinkles and lines in just four weeks. Well, Jennifer, this has been your husband Daniel's fourth deployment, right? Correct. And when you see him, please tell him for all of us, thank you for his service. I will. will you do that, thank please? You. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, do you feel ready to go welcome Daniel home? I absolutely feel ready. The last eight months have been stressful. I feel like it started to come out and show in my face. And now I feel like that youthful glow is back and he's gonna be so excited. So are you feeling a little less stressed now? Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> a I little mean, bit. Just remember, this is for everyone. We all live uh, stressful lives, but sometimes you have to take a step back and do something special for yourself. And Jennifer, before you head off to surprise Daniel, we have a surprise for you. Uh, number seven is giving you a year's supply of their serum. Oh my goodness. Uh, and oh my goodness. Cool. everybody in the audience is going home with a tube of their own, okay? Oh. 
And I'd like to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Dr. Tess Mauricio and uh, Shilan Liu, and a special thanks to T.J. Howard and Origins Behavioral Healthcare. And for more information on today's show, be sure to visit drphil.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Seeing Jen for the first time, she was just absolutely gorgeous. I don't care if she was in curlers and sweatpants, she would just be beautiful to me. The opportunity that she had on the Dr. Phil show was absolutely unbelievable. Thanks a lot, Dr. Phil.